All right, guys, we're going to do this fun sunset over the desert with this lovely cactus. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I am here with a beautiful sunset or sunrise. You make the choice. Uh, over the desert, looks like there's some fog. Might be more of a sunrise. Don't know. It's pretty. So this cactus is in the foreground. There's little cactus flowers just budding up, getting ready to bloom. And I do have on my website a traceable pattern, so you don't have to be able to draw to do this fun, fun painting. I edited this painting. Now, let's go to this other view. Let's see. Oh, the other view was right here. I edited the painting. There was this extra little bit of cactus that was sort of sticking up out of nowhere. <laughs> it didn't really add to the composition, so I edited it out. And that's how we ended up with this. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Or good afternoon or good evening. Wherever you are in the world, I hope that it's good. <laughs> Whatever time of day. Now, I've moved some lighting around and it, it actually it feels to my eye like there's a bit of a sunlight coming through a window. It's a daylight panel, so that's why that feels that way. We're going to do this in layers. We're using the Turner Acryl Gouache. This is an acrylic polymer with the pigments in it. So it's like acrylic paint, but it's matte like watercolor. So you don't have that shiny shimmer. It gives a lovely velvety texture when you lay it down really thick, but you can use a lot of water and work it down when it you're using paper so it looks like watercolor. We're going to be using a couple of those types of techniques in this video. So yay, people are showing up. Thank you so much. And if you if you are interested in all of the videos that I've been doing for this month, I have my acrylic April playlist and it is actually listed up above, kind of like up over here, there's an iCard with my Acrylic April playlist. And that has all the videos for this month in there. I think we need to just get started. I was talking in the chat before with my all the, our friends that come early and like to hang out that we're doing this in layers. We're going to do the background then we'll do the mid mid ground and then we'll do the foreground with the cactus. So I don't need to draw the cactus onto the paper ahead of time. It's going to be the last thing going on. I will probably just um, paint it in, but you do have the traceable. And you can just use this as a guide to know how to draw it in and look at it and draw onto your canvas or your paper. Or you can put tracing paper, uh, Sorol transfer paper underneath of it and draw right on top of this to transfer on after your background is dry. So now looking at this, I need to figure out what color I want to do for the very, very deepest background. Or if I'm going to do this, I think I'm gonna do it more watercolory. <laughs> I like the way the watercolor type background effects work. So we're working on 140 pound watercolor paper. This is by Arteza. And I already told you the paints. I have random brushes here. Links are down below for everything that I have links for. There's links to ways to support my channel on Patreon and Skillshare and Amazon, through my Amazon store, my Teespring shop all the places where you can buy stuff. But the biggest way to help my channel is to click that subscribe button and make sure and turn on your notifications so that you'll be notified when new videos go up. The second thing is click that like button and leave me a comment after the video and tell me, do you want to see me do any more sunsets, 
sunrises, or would you rather and landscapes, or would you rather go to live animals and uh, birds and things like that? Tomorrow is going to be a magpie, so I already have that scheduled. But in the coming month, we've got some fun things that we can do. So, ah, <laughs> let's get started. <laughs> Let's move into a closer up view on this canvas. I'm going to take and get some colors out here. I'm going to do it in a watercolory effect, I think. So I need yellow. And whoops, that's way over there. Okay, we'll go back out to the widescreen so you can wide so you can see me put the colors out. We're going to use yellow. This is permanent yellow deep. We have Prussian blue. I think that's my favorite blue color. I love the variety you can get with it. We have a, let's see, we're doing the sky. So carmine red. Now I like the tubes on the Turner acrylic wash because they're plastic. So if your lid gets stuck, you can actually twist it and not have it uh, torque the whole tube. A lot of watercolors and regular gouache come in metal tubes, and that can be a little bit of a problem. And then white. So look at that. We've got a primary color sky going in. Yes, um, this is going to have a lot of those purplish tones to it. I do have my violet sitting here also. And we'll set that out so you can see. But the top part of the sky is sort of this grayed out blue-green color almost. Uh, I'm not going to go quite so green toned. That could just be an artifact of my printer. But it's this deep Prussian blue up here. And then it works across. And we have the orange here and that bright yellow. I'm going to have to work some pink in so that we have a buffer between that blue. So maybe we'll do our sky with the pink, yellow, orange first, and then we'll work the darker blue in and then get these purpley mountains and that purple, blue, and ever so slight green down here in the lower part. How's that for a plan? Start off. I'm gonna get the paper wet because I'm gonna do this as sort of that watercolor background, I think. So I want the paper to be started out wet. There we go. Let's just work this in. I will be drying the background before we go to the cactus. So now I need yellow. Actually, no, I was gonna put that pink on there. I saw the Art Sherpa do her her desert background earlier today. Oh wow, if you haven't seen it, so pretty. I'm going to take some of the carmine pink and white and get that going right here in the middle, heading up towards where the blue is going to go. Boom, ooh, pretty. I'm going to work back and forth in a horizontal fashion because the clouds are actually sitting on here in that type of direction. I think now we can go to that closer view. Then it's easier to see. All right, so now I'm gonna pick up some of the yellow and I'm going to work that across. Ooh, because that starts moving into those oranges. That's pretty. This may end up being, well, it's going to dry a little bit more dull as it, as it dries. Maybe start working a little bit of some of those cloudy bits up. And yes, I am working with a flat brush right now. We can move into all kinds of different brushes if we want. But this just keeps it, keeps it moving across. Paper towel. People like people doing outdoor gardening stuff, biking, hiking stuff at the park and yoga. 
What's, I'm not sure what's going on. Started a watercolor sunset sky yesterday. It's in progress. Yes. Nice thing about this with watercolor, you can come back and rework things. This one with the acrylic wash, each layer as it dries, it's dry. It's done. You can't do anything to it except paint over it. So that's why I'm enjoying bringing this in this way. I'm taking some of that straight Prussian blue, just getting it wet. We're going to be a little bit, um, I'm going to take just a tiny touch of that carmine into it, sort of purple it up. And we'll put it on, then we can work it down if we need to. So I'm going to just bring this in, be brave, be brave, work it across. That's really, really bright blue, isn't it? So now we're going to blur it down, let it... I just need to clean up that little drip there. <laughs> I am working on a slanted surface. Now, look at that. I got this line in here. Prussian blue is very staining, but I want to work that across into some of that orange and pink because it starts to gray it down. I'm going to take a little bit of that pink and move it up here. And because this will dry into layers, we can go back in and brighten it up. We're not too worried about this background. Where can you find Mark's work? You can find Mark's paintings on um, Pinterest. If you look for MWB Arts Creative Journey or MWB, Arts or MWB Arts on Facebook, you can find Mark's paintings. He just completed his, you know, 365 day project. project. There we go. So right now, this is starting to dull it down just a little bit, start to gray it up just a little bit. I'm going to bring some shadowy bits in. Because I can take my orange over the top of this, I will dry it. Then I can bring in my brighter colors again. Now I'm just going to smooth it out just a bit. Boom, boom, boom. And I think we're going to go just dark down, darker down here at the bottom. And it's more green, pink, and blue. So let's just sort of get a muddy blue-green. A touch of that violet in it. Ooh, that's going to be pretty. And this is the base color, really just very dark. I just want to get the paper covered with some paint to give me a direction to go. And I'm letting the, the paintbrush sort of take it up. I want to get some of that purplier color. And then go into that darker tone. And some white. Let's see. Ooh, yeah, we can do that. Give us sort of a purpley gray. Start, start getting a little bit of that in there just to give me some placeholders. I know that there's these mountains actually that go back up in here. We can even take that and really just start throwing some of them in. I know I'm kind of crossing back and forth, aren't I again? Gray it down, take it to the background going to end up looking sort of like their little floating mountain hills for a second here, aren't they? A little bit darker. I'm just having fun. And like I said, I didn't figure this one out ahead of time. So if I make a misstep or something, you may want to just watch the video the first time through. 
and see what I how I ended up going. <laughs> Did it turn out? After this video, we will be able to see, and I will be putting the finished the finished painting up on YouTube on the the uh, thumbnail. Oh, that's looking pretty though. It's not very deserty, is it? We need to warm that up, pink it up, orange it up, purple it up, mess it up. Just get get a, a whole mess of colors going in here. We want to warm up some of those little areas. You see the paint is getting a little dry? Get your paintbrush wet. Move the paint around. Maybe a little bit of white onto that. We're making that kind of look foggy. Ooh, looking, looking at that going, yeah, that's, that's looking good. No, what was that? Have I been to Arizona? I have not been to, well, okay. I've been to Arizona in that I landed at the Phoenix airport <laughs> on my way home from New York. I had to go to, it, I had one of those crazy milk run type flights where we, I went from New York to Las Vegas and from Las Vegas to <laughs> Phoenix and then Phoenix to home. <laughs> So Arizona is someplace I would like to go to probably in the winter time. I'm, I'm much more a fair weather, cool weather person. I'm not too much of a hot. I, I don't really do hot very well. But now that we've got our, our travel van and it does have air conditioning, so that's nice. Look at that. Okay, so we're just we're just working this in. I decided to to start working on that foreground a bit, didn't I? Getting some of that color just just touching in, kissing in here. Bouncing across. Yay, I'm glad you guys are enjoying this. I'm I'm really quite pleased with that. You know, you get to a certain point and you go, do I want to mess things up? I don't really want to mess things up. I want to make things pretty, but I do want to get that nice bright white yellow for the sun. So I'm going to go ahead and get my yellow with a my white. And I'm going to put quite a bit of white in it. I want it to be just toned. Let's see. Can we uh, uh, move that? Move that. So I just took some white and the yellow and I'm just mixing them together. I have a round brush and this is just a random round brush that came from Turner. Well, actually it came from Jerry's with the Turner acrylic gouache. So I just loaded that up with yellow and white and I'm looking here and going, I think my sun is going to be right here. Yes, I put a ton of paint on my brush, didn't I? So I can get my yellow, white, bright sun. I could have I could have painted the whole thing yellow, I guess, and then put the tape on it. Or I could have used a um, mask of some kind. There we go. Now the very center of that sun is actually really super white. So I'm going to have that center just become more white. And I could even come back and do it a brighter white, 
so it doesn't mix any yellow into it, but I kind of like it this way. Just a little bit of a glow. We have a bit of an orangey red glow filling this area here more. So I'm going to take some of my Yellow Deep and a touch of that touch, touch, very light touch of Carmine to sort of get that a little bit orange, but not too much. There we go, a little bit more. It's just a just a little bit more orange. There we go. And I'm going to get some of that deeper orange put in to the sky on the clouds. The sky is still, or the paper is still wet, but the paint is starting to dry. So now I want to sort of blend that out just a bit. I don't really want dry brush clouds. So we start getting some light in here. I think I'm going to take some white and that yellow and I'm going to do some clouds up above. A little more white into that yellow. I'm working them across. The sun is below the clouds or appears to be below the clouds. So the highlight on these clouds is actually on the bottom and then they get darker as they go up. So let's see here, we've got some pinky purpley clouds. Just gonna pick up a little bit of that carmine and pink. That might be a little too bright. Let's take a little violet into that. Ooh, there we go. Violet cloud, a little more violet. See, you know that when you come along with me, guys, you're going to have the back and forth, <laughs> back and forth on the painting. And I need that to be even a little bit darker. Ooh, that might be a little too dark, don't know. We'll see. Ah, oh, no, that's actually better. That's a better tone. Cloud, cloud, cloud. These clouds are a little farther over in our view. I'm trying to think if I want to, yep, I do. I want to put a little bit of that darker hill poking up right there. It's going to end up being sort of hidden behind the cactus, but I'm not sure. I want a little bit of it coming out. But it can be soft. I just want some of that variety of shape. Don't worry about it. Go back and forth if you want to. So now I'll work that little bit of mountain with fog or hills with fog in the background. Ah, thank you guys so much for, for all the love and the hitting that thumbs up button. If you're new, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate that. And like I said at the beginning, if there's anything that you uh, have questions about, always check the description below the video. If you are on a regular device next to the regular device, if you're on a mobile device next to the title, there's usually a little triangle. Click the triangle and it will toggle open all of the information. I don't try and hide it from you. YouTube might, but I don't. I'm going to take a little bit of the pink and white and purple 
and more white and start working this in. Whoa, that's really strong fog down in the, in the valley. This has got to be sunrise, right? So it's kind of filling in that valley right down in there. I'm just putting a little bit more water on my brush so I can just lay some in. Then I'm cleaning my brush and blurring it out. Neat thing about working on paper, you can work in really thin layers, you can glaze, and you don't have to add anything special to your paint to get it to stick. If you're doing this on canvas, you might want to use glazing medium, even with the, the acrylic gouache. I would just suggest using a matte or satin so that it didn't affect your your final finish. The matte glazing medium will not affect the final finish of the gouache. It will keep it matte so that you will have that soft, soft velvety feeling. All right, you know, maybe a little puff of the cloud with a little bit of dark right up in here that's sort of that yellow white right now more white and then we'll give it that um, shadow on the top and I'm just using a round brush and sort of letting it go a little bit dry as I'm brushing it on and then we can use the water again to to fluff it out if we need to. But water will make it smooth, and I kind of like this being torn apart feel that I'm getting with the drier paint. Softer, brushed in look. And we're going to take a touch of Prussian blue and the yellow and the pink. We're gonna make sort of a dark gray Let's see if I can get that. Yeah, you can see that. Kind of a purpley gray. And we're going to brush this in onto that yellow. And that's giving us that not quite dark enough. There we go. Ooh, there we go. See how that's giving us that lovely dark puff, puff of a cloud? It's like this one over here. I might have gone a little more blue. This one might have a slightly more green cast to it. And I think, again, that's, I think, my printer. And we're going to give it a little bit of some of those puffs of blue over here. And then we'll go back in underneath of them with some of the yellow. Clouds that are bigger are actually closer to you in the foreground. Clouds that are smaller or narrower are farther away. I'm trying to not make these into cotton balls. So that's the that's the thing that usually happens is that we we puff up our clouds too much. You want to keep it, keep them a little bit flat. Get some of that light in underneath on that cloud. Try and keep it puffy and soft. A little bit torn apart feeling, but not too much. Arizona was glorious in March when you drove your RV through. Oh, I bet. I bet. Okay, tiny touch of water. Need to make my paint sort of carry around a little bit more. Taking it all the way off the edge of the 
the canvas, the paper, the surface that we're painting on. Take a little bit of that up into the shadow and carry it across. I want a little bit of a brighter light down here in that cloud. Not too much. A few little spots here and there. Clouds are constantly moving and your clouds do not have to look like my clouds. And my clouds don't have to look like the reference. <laughs> Just give yourself permission to let your paintbrush sort of, like, I'm not going to clean up those two little dots that happen there. Those look cool. They look like little tiny clouds in the far, far distant. All right. I think we need to go ahead and dry this puppy. My background is a little more blue than purple. I could have taken it more to the pinky purpley tones, but it's sort of laid in in a nice way, and I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to mess this up. Now, if you want to have your acrylic paint be more like gouache, two things you can do. One, you can, uh, if you want to just do this with regular acrylic paint, you're set. All you do, work on paper and water your paint down. That's all you do. If you want it to have that matte look after you're finished, and you have a paint that goes more towards the glossy side, by watering it down, it's going to um, automatically give you a less shiny finish. But the other part of it is you can finish with a matte um, varnish after you're done. I would say if you're using regular acrylic paint, use a gloss varnish for your first one or two coats, and then give it a matte varnish, and it will flatten the the reflective quality of the surface, but your paint will still be nice and vibrant. The second thing you could do is if you happen to have a matte medium of some kind in your paint kit, you know, maybe you got it to try something, uh, another effect out, you can add matte medium to your acrylic paint and paint on your paper, just like I was saying, and it will uh, make your paint more matte finished. It's not going to give it quite the the tactile feel of gouache, but it's going to look a lot more like it. So try those out. See how it goes and let me know what you think of those suggestions. All right, back to drying this now. I'm I'm done. Sky is done. Sun is in. The actually I've got a little little bit of a spot right there that I want to clean up that I don't want to be quite so dark with the in my glow spot there. Okay. Just a little thing. You know, something that was drawing my eye. If it draws my eye, it might draw yours. I'm going to dry this really quick. Um, okay. Should you gesso your paper when you're doing this? That is totally up to you. I have been painting all month on paper that is just plain watercolor paper with no surface preparation. Now, I will say that when I put a coat of acrylic paint on it the night before, I don't get as much warpage during my painting lesson on the video. So. If you gesso your paper before, it's going to help keep your paper from warping afterwards. It's going to warp when you gesso it though. So you will gesso it, let it dry. And if you tape it down to something before you gesso, it will um, sort of hold it tight and it will go nice and flat for you again. Heat does release this tape and this happens to be the, uh, the artist tape I am not as happy with this on paper, so I would actually go and look for some paper drafting tape if you're taping paper down because it won't pull up the fiber on your paint or fiber on your pa uh, paper. If you're using, uh, this is archival, 
the paints are archival, the paper is archival, and it's not going to affect the light fastness. These paints are light fast, and they have the only light, the only paints that tend to not be light fast are your um, fluorescents. Those don't tend to have very good light fast ratings. So I didn't use any fluorescents in this. This is just regular paint. We're going to go ahead and get the cactus put on. And I'm going to draw him in, <laughs> draw him in. <laughs> so this little guy, I'm going to, I'll show you. He's a big oval. I say this is his thumb. And these guys right here, he's got more than five, four fingers. He's got like six fingers. But these are like fingers. These are actually the the flowers, the flower buds. And then he's got his little pokey bits sticking out. There's some highlights here and there that make it look more, more dimensional. We'll get to those. But for now, that's what it looks like. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and get my... main base, his thumb, and, and cactuses are weird because where it joins onto the cactus is much narrower than the big part out here. These are not trees. These are not bushes. They are a succulent type plant and they grow in strange ways. So... There's a bunny hidden behind the cactus. Are you saying there's a bunny hidden behind the cactus, Mark? No, somebody's asking if you put a bunny in. Ah, the bunny is hidden behind the cactus. Yes, the bunny's hidden behind the cactus. We want to, uh, <laughs> we want to get this done um, in a fairly reasonable amount of time. So, he's got little, uh, I guess they call them these candles because they look kind of like flames. At least that's what I've heard. Somebody can see one, two, three, four, five. I'm, you know, yeah. And there, there is that little one. <laughs> but where they join, tends to be smaller on those big on those big paddles that stick out. I I don't know. I am still whoops, I just threw that paintbrush on the floor. <laughs> Going down, guys. Got to get a paintbrush. So we're going to mix up a really dark almost black green type color. We're, it's the base tone. So we're going to put this in in silhouette and then we'll build up on top of it. There's a little bit of reflected light. So something has to be on this side of that cactus that's bouncing some of that sunlight back. Because in general, with the sun behind it, you wouldn't see any details. But we see some details up there in that reference. You see some of the little prickle spots and you see some hint of color starting on the flowers. So <laughs> we're going to go in. We've got some of that Prussian blue and the yellow. We're just going to make a dark Prussian blue, yellow, carmine. It's going to be a super, super dark color. I could have used a palette knife to do all the mixing, but this way, my brush is already full of the color. Whoops. See how dark that is? And that was just mixing red, blue, and green. Uh, red, blue, and... Red, blue, and yellow. <laughs> there we go. Red, blue, and yellow. Mix it all up, and it makes a really deep, deep, dark, dark. Deep, deep, dark, dark. So we're going to go ahead and just get him filled in. Add just a touch of water to it. Makes the paint flow better. There 
There we go. Try and put a nice flat coating of it on. But you don't have to be, you know, too persnickety. And if it changes shape a little bit, or see I grew out a little far, I'm going to take my thumb here and I'm moving it. I want to move that out a little bit. Because I didn't want it I didn't want that edge touching. So there we go. Just fill it in really quick. And you could use any shape brush to do this. Whatever you feel like you have control with is the best brush to use. I'm sort of testing out different brushes right here and seeing what feels good to me. And I'm going to go ahead and put these little candly bits in. I don't have the flowers on there yet. I'm just using the tip of the brush to sort of give me a, a shape. Kind of fun. I think that that ended up being a little bit too pointy at the bottom. I'm going to round this guy out just a little bit because we can. You know, that's that's one of the things. You're doing your painting. You can affect you can change it up how you need it. I needed that to be changed up a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and sort of loosely lay those little flowery bits on top. And I'm putting them in sort of painted like their, their shape. They do look like little flames on candles, don't they? Let the brush help you. You can overlay your, your petals. They can look a little bit wonkety. <laughs> ah, right. So now, the front of this is slightly lighter and there's a slightly greeny cast to it. So I'm just going to take a bit of yellow into that dark color that we made. And you see how it's softening it up and brightening it up a little bit. So now what I'm going to do is just start putting some of that in. It's a green. It's, it looks almost as dark, but it's not. And as it dries, it's going to dry lighter. So you'll be able to see it a little bit. And I'm putting it on sort of the edge that the sun would be rolling around it maybe a little, reflecting back onto it. See how we're starting to see that now? That's one of the things with gouache. Gouache has opacifiers in it. It has things that make the paint a little more opaque. It makes it feel a little bit chalky looking or velvety looking. I like to say velvety. A lot of people say chalky. So see how quickly that's starting to dry on there. I see a spot here that I want to make a little darker again. So I'm just taking some of the blue in. Give it a little bit of that shadow underneath. We're just starting to work this out. I hope you guys don't mind when I do these videos. They're a little bit longer. 
that I try to explain step by step what I'm doing in the hopes that that will make it easier for you to do it in the future. <laughs> So now I'm going to lighten up that color even more, more yellow. More yellow. And I'm going to go ahead and put a touch of that right around the outside on the edge where the sunlight is going to be hitting it. And I don't mind if it makes it a little bit bumpy We're starting to get the shape going in. Let's see. Let's see. Because there is texture on all of these little bits and pieces here, we can have little bumps and, and texture. start giving giving him the opportunity to have his little spinies because that's really what the the bumps indicate are spots where there's little spines sticking out so now I'm going to start putting in just some not really random it looks random right now it's going to be tidied up with some dark spots in pattern but because that's where the spines will be going is on those little dark spots but to start off with here I just want to get some texture so it doesn't look quite so flat and it doesn't have any sharp edge lines you don't really want sharp edge lines you want them to be blended out a bit at least for my painting I mean if you want sharp edge sharp edged lines gouache is your friend acrylic is your friend you can get really nice sharp lines all right Gina you have fun be thankful for the grandson even if he's demanding, you know, you've got the opportunity to hang out, so please do. And maybe I made that just a little bit too wobbly, so I'm just going to use this bit of water that's left in my brush, sort of push that back just a smidge. Or grow it out. Maybe we'll grow this one out. I need a little bit more of my definition line back. And that is how we work that. You can work when the paint is still, still wet, not cured. You can actually work back and forth and blend. And if you're using regular gouache, you can do that um, infinitely. <laughs> I know I'm not supposed to touch my eyes, but my eye was itching. So there, <laughs> so there, <laughs> but the, so there wasn't about my eye itching. <laughs> Funny stuff. All right. I am going to make a really dark green, almost black again. I'm still using that round brush. I'd say that this is like a number six or eight round. If you, if you know watercolor brushes, that would be about a number six or eight round watercolor brush. And I think that this is a golden taclon, which is something that's used a lot for watercolor. Just don't use your best watercolor brushes for this. <laughs> Sweet Amy, no, not infected. 
allergies. <laughs> so I'm going to go in and start giving myself some little porcupine, porcupine? How about cactus? <laughs> little cactus spots. And they do sort of go on in a grid pattern. Uh, they might be a spiral grid and I'm doing more of a square grid, but you know, I'm working it around my cactus. There we go. So that's like the shadow. That's like the shadow. Then we'll have a, a lighter spot on top. But first I want to go ahead and get some of these on. Give him his polka dots. And there's a few of them out here where the, the spines will be coming off. And if I can find it, I will be using my, I do, I've got my skewer. I'll be using my wood skewer to make the little spinies. And we're just going to put in these fun little dots. You know, we have all kinds of little details. This is very relaxing, very, very, can be very meditative. Just going in, making little dots and just relaxing. I don't want to put you to sleep, but if you go to sleep, go to sleep. You probably need it. There we go. But this little cactus is my own little cactus now. I'm making him, making him look the way I want him to look, not necessarily the way the the way the reference looks, you know, he's, he's growing and morphing and changing and shadows are sort of moving and it's a living thing, you know, there we go. Maybe a couple of those little bits sticking out there. Maybe one sticking out a little more over here. That's starting to look more real, isn't it? What do you think? That is really starting to look more real. Yay! <laughs> Always a good thing when it starts to look more real. I'm going to, I'm not going to take any white. I'm going to take yellow. And I'm going to give these little guys like little caps. This would be more like the spot that the that the spinies are actually coming out of. So again, we're just doing our little little bits of color, changing things up just a little bit as we go. Each time we do something different, add a little bit. It changes it. You have an opportunity to, ooh, yeah. <laughs> you have an opportunity to make it look more and more the way you see it in your mind. Let's see. Ah, uh, so glad. All right, so Miss Katie had to take off. Thank you, Katie, for being here. Thank you for all of your support. Thank you to all of you for your support here. Remember to go ahead and click that like button if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel. Share the videos with your friends. That's another big way that you can help my channel without spending a single penny. Uh, watching the advertisements also helps me. You know, if it's not if it's not one of those crazy, weird, long you know, full. Have you guys had any of those ones show up that were like 45 minutes long? 
I have. And it's not the choice of the, of the video creator. When those things happen, those types of videos, the advertisers are paying for those and they're putting them on. Oh my goodness gracious. That is looking so cool. And the YouTube creator does not have any choice on what videos are actually being shown. <laughs> 22 people. Yeah. Yesterday we had like 50, but I think it's because we were doing roses. Prickly, prickly cactus is a little bit different than roses, huh? I'm going to take and put a little touch of pink up in those flowers. And I'm actually going to make it a little bit brighter than what's in the photograph. I want a little bit more color. Coming into these flowers. See, look at that. A little bit of color. We are getting really close to being done. There we go. Look at that. There's some highlight that I want to do just because I want to do a little bit of a highlight on those. So I'm taking a bit more white and the carmine. That carmine is such a pretty color and it's so versatile. I'm going to give it just a little bit of detail highlight, a couple little dab dabs, the direction that these flowers would be growing. Most cactus flowers I've heard only bloom for like one day when the actual cactus bloom is going. I was really surprised by that. I thought cactus flowers bloomed for a long time. You know what? I think this down here needs to be darker. Right down low. I'm, this is just water. I think we need to go up to about here and make this darker and then make this whole side darker. What do you think? I think. Yeah, didn't know that the little touch of pink um, but before I do that dark down there, I'm going to go in with a touch of, whoops, too much water in my brush. Just taking a paper towel and just wiping the, the belly of the brush. Let's see. To pull the water out, I'm going to take and make a really bright green to start giving me a little bit of that highlight there. little bit of the highlight up here. Giving us just a bit of a glow. Maybe brush it back just a little bit. That was just a little bit too harsh of a line right there. Oh, that's better. So you just brush it out a little bit. Just wiping off some of that paint on a paper towel, just wiping it off. My brush is kind of dried out now. It's still a little bit wet. Just work that paint out just a little bit. It was just a little bit too much of a cartoon type of line. So let's just soften that out just a smidge. There we go. Like that. Had something on my table that was clicking and it was driving me nuts. So I had to shift things just a smidge. There we go. Oh, I won't be sticking my hand with this cactus. This cactus is my friend. 
It's not going to go stick in me. I say that right now, you know. My brush is wet. I'm just going to wipe off that chalk because the brush is pretty clean and wet. There. That chalk is now wiped off. We're going to go dark. I think that really needs to really needs to go darker down here at the bottom. So I'm I put quite a bit of water in my brush. I'm grabbing red and blue and yellow because every color is red, blue and yellow. All right. And I'm going to go in and say Boom. I just want this to be darker down below. And you can do that. You can come in and say, you know what? I want to put some background in. A little more, a little more um, contrast. See, look at that. Now, I don't want it to be up here. So this is like coming down here. And I'm just going to give it kind of a close, close edge here. And then boom, work my way across. And in this area, if I work my way going in brush strokes across, I can end up with variations in my tone that can look like little landforms down below. See, look at that. We just made that pop right up. I think maybe we'll go to that slightly lighter greeny yellowy color and we're just gonna hit some of those edges. Just like the sun has been kissing it, just ever so slightly, and bringing a little bit of that landscape forward closer to us. See? Boom, bitty boom. I am really, really tickled by that. So now we need to get some of those little spinies on. And I don't really want to put a ton, but I do want some of them sticking up down here. I think I am going to do it with my skewer. And we are going to take some yellow and white. Get a plop of, plop of white over here. And touch of yellow and brown, or yellow and red, and that kind of murky brown tone that's sort of showing up here. There we go. We don't want it to be a stark bright white. And now, in that, uh, in this area right here that, that I just went and painted, I'm going to see if I can get this to go, you know what? That's not fine enough. That's not fine enough. I'm going to have to use a brush. And the nice thing is, we can just go like this and make that into a bit of fog. Look at that. Just make that a little bit foggy down there. And I just picked up a random brush. I don't know which. Oh, I picked up the 3 8 inch flat brush. So, I didn't like that. I don't have to keep it. 
I can go like that. Maybe I want to soften that edge right there too. Soften, soften, soften. There we go. All right. <laughs> Didn't like that. Throw my brush in the paint palette, you know? Sometimes that happens. Oh, hey, you know, I've had many moderators in today, and they've, they've come and go. You know, I have people that have things that need to be done. And because we're a fairly small, friendly group of people right now, we don't need to have a whole bunch of moderators. But thank you for your concern. I appreciate that. I am going to now see if I can do this. Oh, that brush is too too big. Maybe maybe my rigger brush. I wonder where my... I, I'm sorry, I'm looking over to the side here to see if I have a finer brush. Not those. I don't know where my... where my big mimic went that has the super fine tip. I need to find that. I was thinking about that earlier, but this is a rigger. It is a number one rigger. And if your paint is nice and fluid, but you don't want it to be runny. So kind of like a heavy cream or a thicker cream, not wet. I mean wet, but not, um, not runny, not too thick. I think I want to try that on another piece of paper here. So we'll just go like this and go. Yeah, I think I can do that. Light hand. And you don't want any big drippy, drippy um, balls of paint on the tip. So... This one has very, very long spikies. Looking at that photograph. But the spikes come out the top of those little bumps. And I'm not going to put them everywhere, but I will put a few of them here and there on the inside. There's usually like five spikes or something. I'm not doing that many. Rigger brushes were made for painting the rigging lines on the ship paintings. They're also used by sign painters. See how we're doing this and we don't have to keep refilling the brush. They have very long bristles that are very, that hold a lot of paint. All right. Well, I want to balance. So I need one, I need at least something right there. Maybe a little extra there. We're going to rotate this and I'm going to come over here and do Pokey's coming off the side. Then going, let's do it this way. Let's do it where they're being pulled down. Pulling down is always easier than pushing out or up. Don't be too worried if they are a little bit off or they don't look like they're growing quite out of the right spot. It's okay, you know. We're going for an effect. We're not we're not going for super real. Now we need a few of them over here.
Oh, wow. <laughs> I love this. It really does feel like these things are being kissed by the sun. There's depth. There's dimension. We're not too troubled if things aren't going exactly right. This was a relaxation painting in the... I may have to change this and say it's a sunrise, not a sunset, though. It is very hard to stop once you start. I'm going to go ahead and put my little signature down here. I'm using that rigger brush again. It's a little bit brighter. The sun's shining on it. We're going to pull the tape off now. I think we'll turn off this particular picture. Boom. And move the palette out of the way. So we can maybe see the whole thing. As we pull the tape off, reveal it. Remember, anything that goes over, you can just use your white gouache and clean up your edges. My tape is used. I don't think I'm going to be using it for any more paintings, but I use it for at least two. There we go. All right, guys, how'd we do? <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you. I appreciate you by all of the love and kindness that you show in your day-to-day -day lives. The way that we interact with each other, the way we lift each other up, that really is something to be appreciated. And I will start getting teary and cry about that because that really is that important to me. I hope that you will do something creative today. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those you love. And remember, I'm here Monday through Friday live for the whole month of April. <laughs> See you tomorrow.